Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's live stream where we are digging into the exciting, I hope you agree with me, uh, matters of organizing in your catalog. Um, before we get to that, welcome to those of you on Facebook and YouTube. If you've joined from there, if you want to ask a question, please go ahead. Uh, you just need to put a question in the comments and that will come straight through to me and I'll keep an eye on those. If you're hanging out in our live stream room and you want to ask a question, just make sure you restrict it to the Q&A tab as that keeps it separate from the chat. And you're, of course, welcome to use the chat to talk amongst yourselves and help each other. But the Q&A just keeps it separate for my colleagues, Marianne and Victor, who are also hanging out in there as well. So you've got three of us uh, looking after you uh, today. So please don't be shy and bring your questions on today's topic. If you would prefer not to ask questions and you just want to watch, hit that down arrow and that will give you more space on screen as well. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's have a look in Capture One. So today is talking about catalogues. And like this man hanging off this icy cliff face here, you should not be afraid of catalogues. Uh, you should embrace them. It's actually very simple once you understand the mechanics behind it the kind of organization you can do, so on and so forth. So what we're going to look at today is, first of all, what is a catalog? So answer that question, how does a catalog work and function? That's important to understand because once you know how it functions, that will help your decision-making process in terms of storage, um, how you want to store your photos, how you want to use the catalog and so forth. Then we look at Going back to that, how are photos actually stored in the catalog? Two different ways of storing pictures. Offline images, that comes up a lot. What does that mean when you see offline appearing uh, at the top of your photo and a little question mark at the bottom? So what does that mean? How to fix that? How to prevent that happening? And one of the main reasons of <clears throat> looking at a catalog or using a catalog is virtual organization. And then if there's time, we'll look at a few other bits as well. I will divide this up into chapters when the recording goes up on YouTube, which will happen pretty much instantly, but it will take 24, 48 hours to, to fix those. So if you didn't, do need to come back and review, just wait a day or two, and then you'll be able to skip ahead to those various sections. So first of all, what is a catalog? So this is a catalog here. Uh, if we look at this in our finder, then here is our catalog. Capture on catalog, it's a document. We actually refer to it as a document. Uh, in our case, so much as you would open a Word document, you can open a catalog document in Capture One. Something which pops up quite regularly on support is that uh, customers somehow think that the photos are intrinsically inside the application of Capture One. That's not the case. So whatever document I open, I've currently opened Capture One 23, which is this one, are the pictures we're gonna view. Now in that catalog, and a rare moment for me, I'm actually gonna bring up a, a keynote slide, which I never rarely do, but I think it's important to hammer this point home. So what's in a catalog? It's a database. So it has five very important things contained inside it. First of all, it knows the location of your pictures, how to access them. It contains the adjustments of all your photos. It contains the metadata, which could be keywords, shutter speed, lens used, all that additional information and it stores user collections, which is something we will look at later. So five very important things stored with inside that catalog. Now, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, it's gonna look a little bit different, and we'll come to that in a second. But first of all, let's go back into Capture One. I'm gonna make us a new catalog, and we get some pictures into it. So let's close this down and we're going to return to this guy uh, later on to talk about all this organizational goodness we've got that going on. But let's close this for now. So I'm going to say new catalog and we're going to call this live stream PM. And I'm just going to store this on my pictures folder and say choose. Where you store your catalog, less important today than it was five or six years ago. So if we were being really uh, picky, I would say the best performance for your catalog is on the internal drive of your computer. Where the photos are stored, we get to in a second, but the ultimate performance would be on the internal drive of your computer. However, I can run catalogs off external drives, 
uh, like SSD connected via nice fast medium like Thunderbolt or USB-C and you'll see no drop in performance. A long time ago if we were using slower hard drives connected by slower USB protocol then I would say that might not be uh, the best um, performance experience but now because of data flow is so much better through uh, connections like USB and Thunderbolt, SSDs are super fast. If you want to store catalogs on external drives, that's fine. But for this purpose, I'm storing this catalog document in my pictures folder. So let's say, okay. So now if we go back into the finder, sorry, I can right click just to bring it up. You'll see we've got two catalog documents, Capture on 20, uh, Capture on 23, that's the name of that catalog, and this catalog, Livestream PM. And to open either one, I can just double click on it and away we go. So now we've opened that catalog alongside the other one. So like I would have two Word documents open, I can have two catalogs open. Uh, if that's not working for you, little tip, if we look in preferences under general, uh, you will see catalog and session open in new window. So you can have several open at the same time. Okay, let's get some pictures into it and then we can look at the catalog structure in a bit more detail and uh, the two different ways that we can store pictures. So those are, we can have managed files and referenced files. So first of all, let's look at referenced. So let's hit this large import button in the center. Uh, let's go ahead and choose some pictures. I'm gonna choose these, I just wanna show you where they are. So on my external hard drive T7 Traveler, I'm going into this location, capture on demo catalog, demonstration images, and picking Daniela's folder like so and say review for import. So I've got 22 pictures like so. Now managed and reference, what does that mean? So we don't tend to use those terms, you know, marketing or the website or whatever, because it doesn't necessarily know, um, you know, uh, <laughs> give you any sort of clue or relation. But if I was to say, add to my catalog, notice under here, it says your files will stay where they are. So capture one, doesn't move them, it doesn't copy them, they stay exactly where they are, and Capture One references them in that place. So that's what add to catalog means. So let's actually go ahead and do that and just say import all, like so. So now if we look in the folders tool, we're gonna to see the finite destination of where these pictures are. So if you remember in my finder, T7, Capture One Demo Catalog, Demonstration Images, and they are. So they are referenced in that location. Wrong Daniela, there we go. Referenced in that location. Second option is to manage, to allow Capture One to manage where your photos are. So let's do that and show you where that terminology is. So let's choose a different collection of pictures. Let's go for, um, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's take these, just a small folder of pictures. I'm gonna pick all of those. And this time, instead of saying add to catalog, we're gonna say copy into catalog. Help text underneath says your files will be copied into the catalog structure. So what does that mean? So if we go back to our catalog and uh, the pictures folder, it means they are gonna disappear inside this catalog document. So those of you who perhaps used Apple Aperture a while ago or the OS Photos application, few other imaging applications out there, means those pictures disappear inside that document. So let's actually go ahead and do that. And then you can see how it looks in Capture One. So let's say import all, pictures coming in, let's open some tasty seafood. And now you can see in the catalog, there are 17 pictures. If we look at that catalog document, you'll see it's now grown considerably because it has um, those, however many, 17 pictures inside it. I don't recommend you do this. This is just for educational purposes. But those of you on PC are gonna see a slightly different structure to what happens on Mac. On the Mac, this is what's known as a, a packaged file. So if I right click on it and say show package contents, you'll see we've got originals, cache, uh, and write lock, which means that right now, if I tried to open this catalog on another machine, it wouldn't happen. But under originals, you'll see a bunch of 
seemingly random folders to you, folders that make sense uh, uh, to capture one, eventually you'll find where the raw files are. But they've been copied inside that catalog. Now if you're on a PC, if we go back to this guy, so on a PC it's going to look like this. Adjustments, cache, originals, capture one. So this is, if you like, the, the capture one part, that's the catalog document, then you've got the originals, uh, cache, and adjustments stored as well. And also a, a backup, which we can explain later too. So Mac and PC is pretty identical, except Mac, we can package all that up. On a PC, we can't. So there's no difference to Mac and PC, it's just one can be packaged, one can't. So let's uh, come out of that so we don't ruin anything. And as I said, I don't suggest messing around in the package uh, yourself. That was just purely for uh, educational purposes. Now, how does that look in Capture One? So as I said, you've got managed show as in catalog, reference show as their absolute path to where they exist on your system. Now you can go from reference to manage. So let's say I'm going traveling. I don't want to take this hard drive with me. Instead of the little tiny SSD it is, consider that it's like a big bulky uh, mechanical hard drive on something. So there's nothing to stop me picking up this picture and copying it, sorry, not copying it, moving it inside this catalog. And I'll get a warning up saying the selected image will be moved. So if I say move, and then we look uh, in catalog like so. Oh, it was already in catalog, idiot David. Let's take this one, the reference picture, and move it inside the catalog like so. And now you can see it's changed to 18, and we'll be able to easily identify that picture here. Once I've finished my travels, I've edited my pictures, and I want to move them back to the referenced area, I can just drag and drop once more like so. So if you do see a bunch of numbers next to in catalog, it means you have copied them inside the catalog when you did that import. So that's sometimes a confusion that comes up is, is you know, why is my catalog document so enormous? This will grow because if you remember, it also contains the uh, previews, which we'll talk about a bit later as well. So we did two very simple, let's bring me back up, sorry. We did two very simple imports, a managed one, and a reference one, and we can easily move between the two. How do I make Capture One aware of you know, other locations? So that's either done in the import process. Let's actually whack in a memory card as well, because I want to show you that you know, in a catalog, you don't have to store everything all in the same place. So I'm just going to put in a memory card of half a dozen pictures. Now, we wouldn't say add to catalog because they're on the memory card. So we want to get them off the memory card somewhere safe. We might want to say copy into catalog if we were doing a managed catalog. But this time I'm going to say copy to folder. And let's just put these in a totally different place to everything else. We'll put them in the pictures folder and we'll make a new folder called Iceland. And set that as my import folder. Um, yeah, import to Iceland like so. We've got no subfolder going on. So let's uh, pick all of those and import all of those pictures. Let's do that. So now that import is going to carry on. And now, so you're going to see this activity file here. Whilst this is popping up, let's talk about this, generating previews. So if you remember, I said also in your catalog is that preview file. So that is a very nice, high quality, but considerably smaller version of your imported file, whether that's a raw file, a TIFF file, or whatever. Everything gets um, a preview made. Now this is a background task, so you do not have to sit here and wait uh, for that to finish. So if you want to go ahead and start editing, you know, a picture way down here, I can double click on it. Capture One will prioritize making that preview, and I can go ahead and start editing and so on. So do not sit here and wait for this to finish. You can close it and forget it exists. Interestingly, if we look in Capture One Preferences, you have a decision to make about the size of your preview. And you can see next to uh, the preview image size, you'll see something that says recommended. And that's based on the size of the largest monitor on your system. So I finally junked my 2K monitor and uh, ended up with a 5K monitor. 
So now Capture One has switched from previously, it was saying 2560, has now gone up to 5120. So that's my recommended preview size. Because essentially what happens is when we're browsing through pictures in Capture One, we're not accessing the raw file wherever it may be stored, we're simply reading that preview. We only need to find the raw file when we zoom into 100% and we need to uh, demosaic the full file and, and look at it in maximum detail. So that's a good benefit of catalogs is having that preview association to increase performance. Okay, so uh, yeah, so if we look here now and we expand this out, Oh, we, uh, sorry, I forgot to turn off organizing by date. So we can see we've got all the pictures organized by date like so. And uh, we've got our pictures stored on my external hard drive and we have a bunch inside the catalog as well. So this is, you know, a fairly busy catalog. It's got images in a few different locations. That's absolutely fine. We can drag and drop pictures between those folders as we wish, so on and so forth. So what's the advantage disadvantage of managed and referenced? Well, you might have guessed, but if we look at um, our catalog here, so it's up to 1.23 gig because we had a bunch of pictures inside. I'm using fairly large previews, so that's obviously the size it's gonna get bigger. But if you were purely doing managed photography or managed photos, then the size of your catalog here is gonna be limited by the size of the storage that it's on. So it doesn't take long to get to 300 gigs worth of, of photos, really. So once that managed catalog outgrows the storage space, you're kind of stuck. You've got to move it somewhere, you're gonna to have to start storing pictures referenced and so on. But managed files are very good for smaller catalogs and also good if you want to make it portable. So if I want to send an entire catalog to another Capture One user, I can do so. And it's very easy when it's managed because all the pictures go with it. So if I was to grab this catalog here um, and send it to one of you guys on, on the chat, then you'd be able to open it and you would see all the pictures that are stored in catalog, but you wouldn't be able to see these because you don't have the associated uh, meter associated media attached. Referenced, of course, you can store pictures anywhere. You can store them on one external hard drive, you can store them on multiple external hard drives. So once a hard drive fills up, you can just start filling up another one and another one and another one. And after we look at some questions, uh, we talk about how to make Capture One aware of additional media that you want to store things on. Okay, uh, is this comment section the only way to ask a question? Yes, it is. I just hadn't had a break for that yet. <laughs> um, Efrain, we shall answer your question. If you're shooting a photo shoot, would you choose a catalog or a session? Uh, as other people have said, I would undoubtedly choose a se session for reasons that we won't go in today. But later on in February, uh, I can't remember the exact date because it's not online yet, we're going to do the same thing with sessions. So I think it's February the... It's either the 9th or the 25th. I can't remember what date I set for myself. Um, but look out for it on our live stream page, which I'll show you at the end. So yeah, undoubtedly a session. Um, looking over here, uh, what's the difference between a managed catalog and a, and a session? Sorry, Gustav. Well, very simply, I would say catalog designed to manage a large amount of photos with powerful ways to organize, search, and filter. A session is designed for a single short-term project or a tethered shoot. So a session is not designed to hold many pictures or it's not efficient for it to hold many pictures. So catalog, many, session, short-term project, or a tethered shoot. I think that's the best way to, to categorize it. Over here for questions, I can see Marianne and Victor are doing a smashing job of uh, answering those questions. So I'm sorry if we can't get your specific question today. Remember, you can reach out to support, uh, support.captureon.com if you have any uh, other questions. Uh, if you want to see more about specific import workflows, 
if you go back to a live stream that was a couple of weeks ago, we kind of went from an A to B. And I spent a little bit more in detail about talking about import strategies and so on. So there, there is that as well. Okay, I shall move on. Otherwise, we could get answer questions for the next uh, 60 minutes e easily. <laughs> um, what's next? Okay, as I said, making Capture One aware of, like if you want to add some media. This comes up a lot. It's happened to me. So I've been adding pictures to my external hard drive and capacity is getting a little bit uh, on the small side. So how do we make Capture One aware of some new media? Or perhaps maybe your hard drive has completely died and you want to restore from a backup after you've bought a new hard drive. So if we look up uh, here, for example, in folders, and I click on plus, oops, the wrong window, let's go over here. Uh, then we open up another window where I can make a new folder and make Capture One aware of that. So uh, if I had an additional hard drive, I could just make a new folder on that, like a brand new empty hard drive and I could start moving stuff across to, or I can make you know any other folder aware. Uh, so as an example, like if I go back to this hard drive and make uh, a new folder, I'll tell you what, let's, I do have another hard drive hanging out on the system, but I think I accidentally ejected it before we started. So if disk utility wasn't super slow, I'd add to that. But disk utility is not plain ball, so I won't do that. But anyway, if you imagine this is another hard drive, I can make a new folder. I could call this archive two as an example. Say create and add. And now Capture One is aware of that. So if I wanted to drag and drop pictures over to that different location, then I can physically move photos like so. Again, if we look in Finder and look in my little SSD, you'll see that picture is in there like so. All right. Offline, what does that mean? So let's actually do it with this picture. So I drag and dropped uh, that picture from A to B into this new location. So what about if I put it back? So let's go into Finder and actually do that. So I'm gonna take this picture, I'm gonna put it back in its space, which is gonna be really tricky if I'm speedy enough. Tell you what, let's um, <laughs> open up a new window and find that and I'll drag and drop it between them. So demo catalog, Daniela, like so. So let's take this picture and put it back in there. Now, as soon as I do this, this now reads as offline. Why? Because I moved it and Capture, Capture One doesn't know where it is. It's uh, disappeared. And the reason for that is because catalogs do not monitor the entire computer system that would be completely inefficient and make the performance incredibly bad. So Capture One is expecting you to do these kinds of things inside Capture One. Moving pictures, moving folders. The intention is that you do that inside Capture One. If you do it outside of Capture One, you get a warning saying this picture is offline. I can still do some editing because we've got that preview. So I'm still able to edit the picture. I can't export a high resolution because I don't have the raw file but I can do some general basic editing. What I can do is right click and say, locate. Uh, what number is this cold? Uh, and then I can tell Capture One, I'm an idiot. It is over here in like so, this one here and say open. And now Capture One will move it to the right spot. And there it is. But that's a bit of a lengthy process really. So if you do want to move pictures around to different folders, pick it up, dump it into the spot. You will get a warning. You can say, don't show this message again if it annoys you. I tend to leave it on just in case I accidentally move something. If you want to turn it off, you can go to the preferences and say under warnings, uh, warn when moving images and folders in a catalog. This is important. You can also move entire folders. So if I wanted to, I could pick up this entire folder and dump it into demonstration images like so. And it will be physically moved on my hard drive. So if we go and find that, scroll up, there it is, archive two with that picture in there. You can also locate entire folders, locate if you wish. 
if you've moved it outside of Capture One. But really, it is incredibly much simpler, <laughs> if I can say incredibly much, incredibly much simpler to just do those moves inside Capture One. <clears throat> Let's see if we have a look at here. Uh, Jared, if one has limited RAM, e.g. eight gigabytes, does catalog size and manager approach use more RAM versus reference? I don't think so, to be honest. Because uh, remember, even with a managed catalog, we're not reading the raw data all the time. We're just reading that preview file. So I would say no, it doesn't make a difference really. Um, if you are locating a missing image and there's several missing images in the same place, will locating one automatically pick up the others? No. But if you locate a folder, then yes, it will. So if I you know, move a folder, everything's going to show us offline. But simply locating that folder means it will bring it back. So, but the golden rule is do it inside Capture One and you'll save yourself um, a whole heap of time, that's for sure. Okay, let's move this one back in there. If we want to get rid of a folder, we just highlight it and press minus over here. So that will get rid of archive two, gone. It's only removed it from the catalog. If we go to my hard drive in particular, it's still there. So that's just to stop you accidentally ditching you know thousands of pictures uh, at once so it will still remain but it's gone from the catalog database but i can just delete this as normal from there okay hope you're all clear on that so far but you know managed pictures inside capture one referenced reference where they already belong on disk move them between managed and reference no problem move them between other locations no problem uh, folders, use the plus button to make Capture One aware of new media or other places you would like to move pictures to, minus to get rid of it. Simple as that. Okay, uh, let's see how we're doing for questions over here. Uh, does the photo file move or is it copied? It moves. So if you're dragging and dropping between those locations, it is moving it. It would be disastrous, and we we'll talk about that in a minute, to have duplicates of the same raw file because if you duplicate the raw file, which one is current, which one has the most recent adjustments, uh, et cetera. So we don't want to do that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's always moving it, Charles. Uh, let's see, uh, 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 something about projects, which we're going to talk about now. Uh, if you copy to a folder from an SD card, how to make that part of your existing reference image folder structure? That's Gail asking. So when you say import and you say import to, you would just pick the folder here. So if I said copy to folder, then Capture One's going to ask me where I want to, to copy that to. So if you already have that existing folder structure, it's going to exist on your hard drive. So if I wanted to copy these pictures into whatever, um, my where's my folder david 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 if i wanted to copy them into this folder as an example i would just choose it here when you select copy to folder okay let's uh clear that and we were going to talk about virtual organization so the main reason or one of the reasons why you would want to use a catalog Yes, you may be happy with organizing purely by folders as we've done so here. So we've got some pictures down here, we've got some internally, we've got some in our catalog and so on. But let's take Daniela as an example. So these were pictures that were shot as part of the 23, Capture One 23 launch campaign. So we've got 22 pictures here. And let's say we've got a bunch of people who need to make some decisions on pictures that they're going to choose, perhaps the final pictures, pictures for social media, pictures for web, and so on. <coughs> so we want to sort these pictures. Now, it's very difficult to do that with files and folders, and it's also slow. So I could, in theory, I could right click, I could say, um, sorry, not right click, I could say plus up here. I could add a new folder. So if I go down to Daniela, I could add a new folder and I could call this. Um, whatever, client selects, selects, like so, create that and add that. And now Capture One is aware of it. So then I could pick up this picture and say, okay, the client has selected this one. 
move it. Client has selected this one, move it. And the client has selected this one, fine. Now let's say we've got um, social media manager or someone else who needs to make selects. Right click, sorry, not right click, add. Uh, I'm gonna make another new folder and we call this for social media. And create that and add that. So now Capture One is aware of this folder. Well, what if the social media manager also likes this one? Okay, let's move it to that. But now it's gone from this folder. Now, as uh, Charles was just asking, is it copied or moved? It's always moved. So the only way around this issue is if you start duplicating raw files so we know, okay, the client wants these three. Let's put that one back. And the social media manager also wants one of these and some other pictures. So this is a pretty inefficient way of doing it. So let's um, shift these back to Daniela. And we're gonna do it in a far better way. And let's get rid of that folder so it's not cluttering up our view and we get rid of that folder. So this brings us to user collections. If you remember, if I press the right button, user collections, let's skip ahead, also exist inside the catalog. So what we're gonna create now lives inside this. So it's a virtual collection. So when we move pictures around, we're not actually moving anything. They don't actually move from their uh, original location, which would be here. It's purely a virtual collection. So let's show you what we mean by that. So under user collections, we don't have any currently. We've got a plus button and we can make four different kind of organizational items. Now that might sound um, excessive, but they all do a, a slightly different job or they all have different superpowers if you like. So let's start with a project and let's call this Capture One 23 Launch. And we say, okay. So now we've created a project. Take a look at this icon. What does it remind you of? Cardboard box with a lid on it. So we're gonna to toss some things into this cardboard box. Now, if I try to just drag a photo in there, I can't. So I need to have one of the other organizational elements in there to start adding photos to it. So I'm gonna right click and make a new folder, sorry, a new album. And we're gonna call this all images. So everything that the Daniela shot for the campaign. So if I select all of these, I could drag and drop them to the all images album like so. So now we've got 23 pictures in there. Now we can start sorting who wants what. So if I right click once more, I can make a new album. And let's say we're gonna call this web images. And we're gonna decide, okay, for the web, uh, I wanna have this one. This one looks better with our theme, so let's take that. This one we also wanna have, and let's go for this one, like so. Now also, we want some for social media, so let's do the same exercise. Uh, looking at web images, say, okay, well, we're using this one on the web, so it'd be nice if we were consistent, and we also use this one on SoMe and this one on SoMe. Note now we're not moving anything. So we've got these two images existing here, and they also exist here. They have not moved or changed anywhere from their existing location. So this is just purely virtual collections. As I said, they exist inside the Capture One catalog but it means I can have the same location sorted into different buckets. So these are just basic collections, albums. What about if we right click and we say new inside, we're gonna do a smart album. Now a smart album will populate itself based on the search criteria you set. So you don't drag and drop anything into it. It's based on its search criteria. So we're gonna do the most simple uh, smart album that we can do, which is simply five star, whoops. Actually, let's call it uh, top images. And then in brackets, we we'll put five star rating. And we're gonna use a preset, which is five stars. So the rating equals five stars. It's gonna appear in this smart album. So let's say, okay, right now it's empty. 
But if we go back to all images and then we decide which ones are the top ones, I'm gonna mark that five stars just by tapping five on my keyboard. Uh, what else? This is a good one. Let's tap five stars there. Uh, and let's tap five stars here. So now if we go to this one, we've got three shots in there. Great. That's a very simple smart album. If we right click and say edit smart album, then we can add you know, any criteria to that. It could be the date range, it could be a color tag as well, it could be the kind of camera it's shot on, it could be the serial number of the camera it's shot on, it could be a lens, it could be an aperture, pretty much any metadata item recorded by the camera, any metadata item that you add afterwards, um, and all that various other extraneous stuff like even uh, we've got uh, orientation, rating, as I said, certain keywords, and so on. So let's cancel out that. We'll look at a better way to make uh, smart albums with more complex search terms very shortly. Now, there's a real powerful part of this project to smart album relationship. Because let's go to all images. This is looking at all the images in my catalog, regardless of where they're stored on our, you know, couple of different locations that, that we've got. So I'm gonna go to this one and mark that five stars. Now, if we go back to our five star album, does it appear? No, why not? Because this smart album is only searching the contents of this project. So it's only looking inside this box. So it's a ring fence. It means that this smart album's power is restricted to that particular project, which is, you know, super powerful, really handy. So what if, if I go to all images once again, and I go back to this and I make a smart album and I'm gonna call this global five star images. And we use our preset once more and we say, okay. So now if I click on this, what do we see? So we see these three shots, which belong inside that project. And we also see this one because all of these pictures, you know, belong in the catalog. So it's searching the entire catalog for anything that's five stars. So it does mean if you have multiple projects, you can have smart albums of all kinds of different criteria, uh, searching just within those projects. Now let's say you wanted to use um, a smart album to look for, you know, a particular lens, a particular camera or something like that. We can do it the traditional way, which is to say, new smart album, and then we could pick our search criteria, which could be, uh, let's say, camera model, equals, what do we put in here? Now, the camera manufacturers are notorious, Sony in particular, to be honest, at giving their cameras slightly daft names on a metadata level. So it wouldn't be something as obvious as A7R, whatever, so let's say A7R Mark IV. It's not that. <laughs> Nikon is actually pretty good. They just call it Nikon Z7, nice and easy. So easy to do it. But Sony, it's something different. Lenses, forget about it. You'll never guess the metadata title for the lens. So what we can do is use the filters tool. So if I go to the all images collection, let's just bring out filters for a second. Whoops like so, we've got um, generally one, two, three, four basic filters that you can use. Uh, but you can add and remove different filters by going up here and saying show hide filters. So I added camera models earlier, but let's also throw camera lens in to show you the ridiculousness about that. So if we look at camera lenses, so these are the metadata terms you would have to guess. So Canon EF50, F1, you know, it's not, it's not possible. So let's say in my collection of 108 pictures, we wanted to see everything that was shot on the Canon R5. So if I tap on this, it instantly filters to Canon pictures only. By the way, if you've got a filter term on, so look at the numbers up here. So we're looking at 108 pictures we've got in our catalog. If I turn on a filter term, so Canon e EOS R5, notice that the colors, sorry, the numbers change color. So if you're wondering why you can't see all your pictures in a collection, just have a look and see if it's switched to orange, then you know you've got a filter active. So super cool thing 
is now, you'd never find this on your own, next to the search bar, there's a little three orange dots. If we click on that, that shows you the currently active filter and we can transform that into a smart album. So if we had something really complicated, like, I don't know, let's take this particular Sony lens. So we've got 40 pictures there. I can say, click on the three dots, create smart album. Then I can call this Sony 24 to 70 shots, like so. So something actually legible. So now in my you know entire catalog, I can see, okay, these were all shot with the Sony 2470. Now, if I wanted to, I could edit that smart album and you can build additional criteria. So you could have something like, okay, show me the all of my landscape keyworded shots that are five stars and shot with this particular lens, just to give you an example. Or which has this client keyword was five stars and was shot between this particular date range. Sky's the limit, really. Okay, um, one really handy thing. Okay, so we've established this smart album has found everything shot in a 24 to 70. Where is this actual picture? Where is it in my folder structure? Let's say I've got 20,000 pictures in this catalog. I would have absolutely no idea where this photo belongs, except I can very nicely right click and say, show in library. And as soon as I do that, Capture One will select the folder and the picture and show me exactly where it is in my library, like so. So if I go to this one and click on this picture, right click and say show in library, straight away it selects the photo and the collection it's stored in. So don't worry if you've got you know, a massive user collections, it's still very easy to actually find, they are, find where they are. Because let's say, look, we've marked this one as uh, five stars, but you might look at it and think, oh, you know what? I think there were seven other pictures in that sequence that were all slightly different. I'd like to have a look at them. Right click, show in library, you found it, or rather the catalogs found it. So don't forget that, that's a really useful feature. Um, mm, 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 mm. Yes, Daniel, if you make an adjustment to a variant that is in two albums inside a project, will it change in both places? What if you want to separate variants out? You could, so, because variants now, since Capture on 23, they are independent, let's just get rid of that, independent of the collection. So if we go to, what did we have? So we've got this picture. Let's just do something stupid with um, exposure so you can see. So I've messed that up. If we go to web images, you can see it's exactly the same shot. However, what I could do, let's just reset that. If I said image uh, clone variant or new variant, and then we turn this into black and white, whatever, like so, and we go to this one, you'll see that variant doesn't appear here because it's independent. So I know it has another variant attached to it because it shows me one in the corner, but this one only stores the color and black and white. So you could separate them out. Uh, so if I drag this elsewhere, I could drag it to a different spot. So variants can be independent of the collection they're stored in. So I hope that answers your question. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay. Uh, so Dado says that so the smart album can be moved to a specific folder to constrain it, to a specific project. That is the power of the project. So up here, that's the power of the project. The project has that ring fence container around it. This one or these two, which are outside of a project, search the entire catalog. So this one is gonna show me anything in the catalog that's five stars. This one is gonna show me anything that's 24 to 70 shots. If I move this inside here, then it would only search inside the project. So it's super, super handy, it's very powerful. How are we doing for time? 15 minutes, okay. Um, last one, groups, what do they do? This is your OCD cleanup container, because let's say you've got a big catalog, you've got lots of uh, uh, user collections. This area can get very big, so the group is a way for you to tidy it up. So let's say if I make a new group, I'm gonna call this client work as an example, and then I could drop 
this project inside it, I could make another group and I could call this personal work and right click and make new projects inside here. Let's say new IC pizza restaurants as my life defining project and so on. So I can start to tidy up or I could make another one. Let's make another, oh, let's make another group and I'll call this global smart albums. Because let's say I've, I've got 20 of them. They're gonna take up a lot of space here. So I could just drop them inside a group. The group does not do any clever restriction on smart albums or anything like that. It's simply just having a little tidy up like so. So now I can see, okay, my client work, my personal work, these are all my global smart albums. I wanna open this one. I wanna to go to some client work. I need to look at the Capture One launch and here's all the pictures for it. So if I just sh shut this catalog down for a second and open up this one, you'll see how I organize you know, even a relatively small catalog. So you can see here, I've got a bunch of folders that are all stored on that external SSD. Um, but I've also got a bunch of user collections because I quite often need to reuse, let's just close that, reuse the same pictures for different things. So you see here, I've got five or so groups defined by different versions of Capture One. If I pop this folder on, you can see I've got um, you know live stream folder like so, where I've got a few different live streams listed in here, all different projects. Some might have a smart uh, album, some might not, uh, but it means it's all nice and tidy. If I look up here, we've got some external educational stuff I've done, miscellaneous smart collections, another example. This will just show me everything which has a .raf extension or everything which has uh, .nef extension. So it's very easy to quickly find Fuji files, Nikon files if I need to do something specific. So lots of different ways that, that you can organize. But that group item, just helps tidy uh, everything up. This is a question that's come up a few times actually uh, today. If you have multiple catalogs, can one of them be designated as the default catalog? Well, there's nothing to stop you having um, multiple catalogs, first of all. Uh, and it really is, Michelle, it's just a case of opening the one you want. So Capture One, if I quit Capture One, and restart it, it will open up with whatever the last catalog was. So, oh, it's opening on my other monitor. Great, hang on. No, oh, no, it didn't, it worked. So it will open up in the exact same state as to what it was, how you last closed it. I can always say file open to get to a different catalog. So let's go to this one, sorry, this one. And another trick you can do let's just quick capture one again, is if you hold your option key down or alt key whilst you start capture one, it will not open anything. It will just simply show you, go away resource hub, it will show you a list of recent catalogs that you've opened. So you'll see the last 10, I think it is. I can't remember exactly. But I can also say new catalog, new session or browse or choose one of these recent ones to open. So if I hit browse, I can just go ahead and find the catalog I want. Cool, so I hope that answers your question, Michelle, but it's, it's, that was almost like saying, if I have multiple Word documents, can I designate one as the default? Because that's essentially what it is. So you're just opening a document. Um, but obviously most of us tend to open the same catalog or same catalogs, um, you know, <laughs> with with various regularity. Uh, 20 to 19, I use different catalogs for different date ranges, usually when I move to a new location. It's great, glad to hear it. Right, what are we on to next? So I think uh, we covered virtual organization. So another thing that's very useful, and I think this taps into a few questions as well, is extracting pictures from a catalog to make another catalog, especially if you want to send it to somebody like a retoucher or whatever, or you just want to take a few pictures on the road with you. So any collection, if you right click and say export collection as catalog, 
you can do so. So let's just call this Daniela. Daniela. And you've got an important checkbox down here. So if I don't check this box, then it's going to create me a catalog, but it will reference the images where they are currently. So if I say export collections catalog, it's pretty speedy. And we open this one, Daniela. Then you'll see it's just referencing those pictures to where they were. If uh, we do the same thing again, and uh, I right click and say export collection as catalog, and we tick this box, let's call this Daniela managed. It's going to also take the photos and put them inside the catalog and make you a, a complete managed catalog. So if I say export collection as catalog, Export completed, and we now find Daniela Manage. So look at the size of this one. 12 megabytes, because it contains 22, well, it doesn't contain 22 images. It contains references to 22 images and 22 previews. If we look at this one, it's 766 megabytes, because it's got 22 pictures in it. But if I open this one, notice now it says in catalog. But that's a really handy way of quickly making managed uh, catalogs. And once again, don't wait for this to stop. If we want to look at this one, see it's, it was super crappy and then it snapped fast because Capture One made the preview for it. So you can just go ahead and start editing. You don't have to wait for Capture One to finish this activity bar. We even thought about removing it at one point because far too many people were just sitting watching it. Don't have to do that. Okay, let's spend a couple of minutes on mopping up a couple of questions and then we will see if there's anything else to talk about. Um, how about exporting edited photos from Capture On 23 to Capture On 22? Can't go backwards. So if you export a raw file with edits, you would not be able to open it in uh, Capture On 22. If you exported a raw file with edits in Capture On 22, you could open it in Capture On 23. Uh, there's a question which I saw over here, which is talking about, could I make some kind of master catalog? Yes, you can, uh, which looked at various different pictures. I mean, this question varies a lot between people, but remember the catalog, this guy, contains the adjustments. So there's no reason why I couldn't make another catalog looking at exactly the same set of pictures but I could also have a same set of adjustments. Remember, Capture One doesn't alter the raw file. It's simply writing adjustment data into the catalog, and then it knows how to represent the picture on screen. For example, if I just ruin the exposure on this shot, written inside Livestream PM, it says, oh, picture number whatever, O2 B&W, has minus 1.5 exposure on it. It should look like this when I export it but we haven't actually edited the picture at all. It's just a set of instructions. So you could have 20 catalogs all looking at the same picture or pictures if you wanted to. So let's say you had 10 catalogs for whatever reason, different clients, different genres. You could have one catalog that looks at the favorite pictures from those. How you determine the favorite pictures is a little bit difficult. I would not duplicate the raw files. That would perhaps be a bit crazy but I would simply make a note of the file name and then just import those pictures into that master catalog so you can do so. If you're fine with duplicating pictures, if there's only a few of them, you can say export original files and you can say include adjustments. And you can also do something which is called pack as EIP, which will pack up the file and the adjustment data with it and then you could import that into your new catalog. So in summary, two approaches. You make a catalog, you import the same images into it. If you're slightly crazy, you duplicate the pictures in the method I've just shown you and import those into a new catalog. So up to you. Uh, what's the maximum number of photos a catalog can hold? There is no maximum, but once you get you know, to massive quantities, hundreds of thousands, then you might expect performance to slow down a bit, especially when you're you know, searching uh, or you have a lot of collections to load or something like that. Um, performance has improved over the years. Uh, we can still improve it more, 
uh, and there's always, with all aspects of Capture One, always looking at ways to improve uh, performance. Can you merge catalogs as well? Yes, you can. So you can say import catalog and you can import a catalog into another one. So if you've been working on two catalogs and think this is daft, you can just merge them together. So in the same way that you can split, yep, then you can also merge as well. Okay, um, oh, what a slightly strange thing on the screen there. Um, just checking a question over there. Let's see, does the reaction time of Capture One, that's an interesting one, increase by the size of the preview? No, it would actually be opposite. Or it depends, because you need to have the preview size that works best with your monitor. So as I said, I've just finally got onto a 5K monitor. So by having a little tiny preview would actually show slow the reaction down of my adjustments. Because instead of Capture One using the preview, it would have to be using the raw data constantly updating on screen, so it would slow it down. So interestingly, this little recommended thing here, we added a few releases ago. Before that, we used to get quite a few support cases of why is Capture One performance not great? Um, the sliders are slow to respond or whatever. It's generally because they would thought, okay, small preview is good, it takes up less space. Um, which is true, but it also will impact the performance. So since we've started analyzing which monitor is attached and telling you which one to use, those support cases have dramatically gone down. So once this is done, go and have a look and see what your recommended is. And if it's too low, bump it up. Now changing it won't have any um, bearing on existing pictures. If you want to regenerate previews, you need to say regenerate previews like so. And Capture One will go ahead and regenerate previews at that new size. <clears throat> Uh, TW says, my monitor is set to that. Is it a retina screen? Because Capture One recommends 5120. Could be a retina screen because in real terms, you still want the pixel density to get Capture One nice and responsive. So just go with the uh, recommended. <clears throat> um, how are we doing for time? Two more minutes. Okay, I shall answer one more question. And again, thanks to Marianne and Victor, give them a round of applause in your head for answering all your uh, specific questions as well. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Last question. Any specific recommendations for M1, M2? Um, just for your clarity, what I've been using today, I'm not on a Mac Studio or anything, I'm on a MacBook Pro 14 inch M1 Mac, so it's not an M2. 64 gig of memory, so quite nice. Um, the images you've been seeing have been sat on a little external SSD, so nothing actually super grunty. So if I eject that, I'll show you what. So everything you've been looked at today was stored on this, so not, it's relatively fast, but it's not the fastest, but it's a nice compact thing to travel with. Uh, you can actually see since I ejected that, everything's gone offline, or at least the ones that were offline were. And you can see there's a warning triangle down here as well. So Capture One is saying, where the heck is this hard drive? But I can still see the contents of it and so on. And quite nicely, this is another good use for um, smart albums or virtual collections. Like if we're looking at this picture, and let's say I'd found it and I want to export it. Oh, I can't, it's offline. Well, which hard drive do I need to connect? Show in library. Ah, it's the T7 drive. So let's connect that one. Away we go. And we're good to go. So now that's online and I can now happily export that. Um, yeah, going back to the max spec. So it's high spec, but it's not the highest spec, put it that way. Um, now we've got M2s, now we've got Mac Studios since this came out as well. So this is very high performing, but you can go the extra mile. Do you need to get an M2 Max Ultra or whatever? Probably not. You can see by the performance here, this is way outpacing any Intel I had before. Um, but for future proofing, I'd say buy as big as you can afford, but don't feel uh, you have to. 
Uh, as JD says, if you look at this, yeah, good channel, Art is Right, it does do good review of the M series. Also, our ambassador, Paul Reefer, he's got on his website a good blog post about good spec for photographers as, as well. So lots of, um, lots of resources out there. Last thing I want to mention, as always, which I will get into the habit of doing this, if I just bring up our support page. If you were here last week, you would have seen me mention that now uh, we've moved all the tutorial, video tutorial material to our support site as opposed to the learn site. And if you go to live streams, you'll be able to see a back catalog of everything before. If you hit follow here, then you'll be notified when any new content pops up. That's the same goes for tutorials and so on. If you hit the follow button, then whenever a new piece of content gets dropped in, you'll get an email notification. So that's a good way to stay up to date with new materials. So that's support.capture1.com. Uh, and then once you're here, you can go to our learning hub. There's the user guide. You can search. So if you want to know about HDR, for example, and you want to see learning hub content, then we've got various different content there as well. So don't be afraid to use that to help yourself learn Capture One as well. And also, YouTube, if you're watching, hit the subscribe button for me because that's another way you'll get notified of new content as well. Fantastic. So we'll be back uh, in February. As I said, I can't exactly remember which dates, but uh, you'll find them uh, on our website. If you're subscribed to our newsletter, you'll get a notification as well. But I will be doing the same thing pretty much as we did today with sessions. And we're also doing a live shoot, a Capture One Live live shoot uh, with Darianne Sanch, uh, Darian Sanch, who's in Montreal. And we're going to do, uh, like we've done previously, a full-on live shoot showing you how Capture One Live works. So thanks for joining me today. Sorry if we couldn't get to your specific question, but it's a, a big subject. Um, but thank you again to Marianne and Victor who are answering in the background. And I'll leave that open for a little bit so in case there's any other questions to answer. So take care and enjoy your weekend when it comes. Thanks. Bye now.